Hello, everyone. Peter Giannatos here with uh, National Master John Ludwig, who just uh, beat David Brodsky in a, an important game uh, for, you know, for his standing in the tournament and so forth. So uh, first time here having the interview. And uh, so I'll just uh, maybe I'll ask you a few more questions at the end of the game. But why don't you just take us through your game for now and um, tell us uh, it was a pretty theoretical line, at least in the in the Benoni. So you can just show us. Uh, I was pretty surprised that he played D4 because mm -hmm. all the games I've seen him play, he's played uh, he's played E4. So I've played the Benoni for over two years now, and I'm very comfortable with it. So I was hoping he wouldn't come up with some crazy prep, but right. I was comfortable with my experience in line. So so he played the time and all variation with Bishop E5 check, which is the most critical line, uh, gaining a tempo on the king. So this is the best move. Otherwise, if the other knight locks the check, then e5 just rolls over my position. So knight f3, the main move is a4, preventing a6 and b5, which is what happens in the game, to limit black's play. So now I can get this in. Right. But at the same time, he can get the whole idea of this line is to play f5 and bishop g5 and maybe queen e1, queen h4 to get quick play. Mm -hmm. So it's really my it's really my queen side play against his king side play. Right. Um, and I've played this position several times against good players like Julio Sidora and people like that. And my, my score isn't that great, but oh well. Um, this game makes up for it. So knight b6 is the line I like. And a3 is a mistake because now I get to trade off my bad dark or bad light squared bishop, which isn't doing anything for the knight on f3, which can be very good for the attack. Mm -hmm. He should have played uh, most likely f5 first to get the attack going and prevent bishop g4. So after this, so queen e1 is a good move. And I took immediately, because if I don't, then he goes knight d2 and my bishop on g5 is misplaced. So I take, and g takes. So now he wants to have two f pawns to you know go f5, take on g6, and then bring the other f pawn down and do the same thing, and maybe have the g file open. So I just simple development. Queen g3, now it's like, okay, now I gotta get my Queen side attack going, so b4. Uh, it's nice to have the best piece on the board, which is the dark square bishop. Uh, here, c4, bishop here, a5, so just supporting my pawn advances. Mm -hmm. So a takes, takes, rook takes, queen takes. And now he plays the really good move, f5. So getting his attack going, but also attacking my d6 pawn, which is big weakness in the Benoni. And um, at this point, I thought for about 35 minutes, and I couldn't really make up my mind. I was calculating c3 for a long time, just sacrificing the pawn, but I couldn't find a continuation to uh, get, the, get the queen. And if I don't get the queen, then I'm just down a pawn. So I came up with the idea of queen a4, but in hindsight, this move is probably rather inaccurate, because knight e3 is a really strong move. Um, the whole idea is he attacks my c pawn, and he's still attacking my d pawn. But now the knight can also join the attack on the king side. And so queen b3 to protect my pawns. And here he played he played queen g2, so that if I go bishop takes b2, he has bishop d1. And that would win my that would win my bishop. So that would not be good. Yeah. So instead of that, I uh, I played um, uh, he should have played um, f takes g6 instead of instead of queen g2 instead of queen g2 okay so f takes g6 mm -hmm. and there's this really interesting line kind of yeah, yeah, yeah so like if h takes i think this move is really bad because knight f5 mm -hmm. and now if he takes if i take his knight then rook g1 and i just get mated here right and i i calculate during the game that mm -hmm. i think something like this mm -hmm. It's really scary. I, yeah. Like, although I have two connected pass pawns, um, it takes one, two, three tempi, and still it's guarded here, so he has a lot of time for the attack. Yeah. So I wasn't sure this would be playable. Um, so in the game, uh, what I would have to do is play F takes. But now my king is exposed to all sorts of checks. So now I can take this pawn. Mm -hmm. Uh, take the pawn, and now takes, and now he has this annoying uh, move here, 
and the whole idea is to get my uh, is to get this bishop off of the sensitive square, as you'll see in a second. So it takes takes, and so now the bishop isn't hanging. So now he's this idea. So my knight's hanging, right. and I was like, okay, this is bad. But later it was like, oh, I might have this actually, mm -hmm. and. It turns out that this position is probably fine for me because right. I got very good dark square control. And although my king's weak, he has no way to take advantage of it. And my this knight is really good, right. so this should be fine for me. Probably as a perpetual, but it's still fine. Yeah. Um, so even this line was okay, but it's still much more critical than what he did during the game. Uh, so bishop g4, he takes. So instead of after queen b3, you play queen g2. Mm -hmm. And so now I get my knight to e5, preventing the knight from coming to g4 as well, which is an idea, and preparing to get the knight to d3, which is a very nice square for the knight. So now he took the pawn. Or sorry, he, oops, he went knight g4. Mm -hmm. And so now I take advantage of the trade pieces. So now my king's a little bit safer, because now this knight... Uh, come to h6 or pair f6. And so I still cannot take this immediately because of bishop d1. The same idea is shown previously uh, that I lose the bishop. So I played uh, queen c2. And now the whole point of this move is to meet possible f6, trying to block my bishop out yep. by just taking. So mm -hmm. now his bishop's hanging. If he takes this, then I can take his bishop. Right. So after queen c2, you played the very nice move, bishop here, bishop to f4. And so now it looks good to take this. But after this, although I have two connected pass pawns, his play is actually at least as quick as mine. Because let's say I move my rook to e8 or d8. Actually, if d8, then bishop c7. So if rook here, he can take here. And this is very annoying, actually, because I don't have an adequate way to protect this pawn. Like, let's say f6, g5, right. and my position is very awkward. So this is a, bishop f4 is a very good move. So I like the move I play in the game, bishop e5. So if he takes the bishop, trades the bishop, then I will end up with uh, this pawn still, you can't really defend it, and although he has a pass d pawn, it's pretty well blocked by this knight. And these two pawns are going to be lethal. So I think, like, even let's say he tries to go into an endgame with this, something like rook a8, bring the rook over, this this uh, ending should be very good for me. Yeah. So bishop b5, so that's why I went bishop here. And now I think I played the only move that's not losing here, which is rook to b8. Um, the whole point of this is to defend the knight. Um, if I played something like rook e8 instead, then takes, takes, queen to f2, mm -hmm. attacks the knight and the pawn. Mm -hmm. And this looks good for a second, but then he has bishop f3. So my knight still attacked and my queen's attacked, and if here, now I can bring his bishop back, mm -hmm. and I lose my knight, which yes. is not very good. Perhaps I can go queen takes b2 and get some play like that with the two pawns versus uh, for the piece, but it's still very sketchy. Um, so rook b8, so now takes, mm -hmm. takes, and queen to f3, and now rook to b7, defending the pawn. Mm -hmm. So now bishop e3 was a good move. Uh, attacking the knight, and I have to move it, because otherwise I lose this pawn, right. because bishop takes, rook takes, queen takes f7. So I go, and I can't go here, because the pawn hangs, so here. And now, I think what he should have done here is, in the game he played rook here to eliminate one of my pawns, to trade the b pawn to the c pawn. But I think would have been stronger is the idea of h4. So let's say I take the pawn h5. I wasn't exactly sure how to defend this position because his idea is to simply take the pawn, takes, and go queen f8, mm -hmm. which is very, very strong. And I wasn't exactly sure how to meet this. Uh, perhaps uh, instead of queen takes b2, instead of uh, queen takes b2, I can play f6. This might be my best. This might be this might be my best bet, but sorry. But uh, so now if f6, I can even swing my rook over and attack this. But I wasn't really convinced by this either because now he goes rook c1. Um, 
And uh, now that my now, now that I've played f6, my king is much weaker to invasions along the uh, seventh rank. So takes, takes, and now my king is very loose, and I was not comfortable with this. So perhaps this would have been stronger, but uh, instead he played after knight c8, he played uh, rook to c1. So now I take here, and one important resource to note that I should have mentioned previously was he can never take with he can never move his bishop in this game because I have queen takes h2 mate. So this might look good, but then I have this. Mm -hmm. So this really tied down his options in the game. So rook takes knight e7, and now he goes rook c1 to reroute the rook back to my position further. But now I was like, okay, I got to take advantage of this opportunity to play b3, get my play going. So here, f6. And so now I'm just going to play queen c2, b2, b1 queen. And it's up to him to find a way to uh, uh, break through. So he played f or g5. To, so if I take, then he basically checkmates me by queen f7 check. Um, so I had to play f5. And it's honestly impossible for him to break through because mm -hmm. my play is very quick here and take like let's say he goes pawn takes mm -hmm. pawn takes now i can swing my rook over to h7 and get play like that maybe rook f7 to just support this knight so my position is actually very solid uh so he played the very interesting move bishop to g1 mm -hmm. so now he can move his bishop uh because now uh, bishop's defending the pawn so I decided his idea is to play bishop D to d3 and put more pressure on this pawn on f5. So I decided to play queen here with the idea in mind that if bishop d3, not only can I play f4 and block everything up, uh, I can also play uh, this idea. And now if it takes, I have b1 queen. Mm -hmm. And this queen is really overloaded. And something like... Uh, this doesn't quite work as takes. I can just take this, and everything's covered. But let's say takes. I can just move this knight now, like here. And this is just completely winning because my rook covers everything. I'm going to set up a lot of material now. So, so after queen c3, he decided to trade queens. And now bishop takes, bishop d3, and b2. So I think I still have... a decent uh, advantage here because uh, this b-pawn is very nice. It really limits the options uh, he has with the bishop. Uh, so he went bishop e3. He wanted to put pressure on this d-pawn, but I took advantage of this and uh, played rook here. So now he played bishop here. I'm attacking this pawn on e4. Uh, bishop e4, which is a mistake. He should have taken this pawn. Mm -hmm. And now I might have this, and um, like, and the bishop is kind of short on squares, actually. Uh, I might have to go back, and then I can take this. But honestly, I think this might be okay for him. I was also I was intending after e takes just to play knight takes, and put pressure in his position that way. Yeah. So if bishop f four, I can uh, you know maybe consider this put pressure on this pawn and I think my I think my position is very pleasant here um he has a lot of lo loose you can uh, never really give the bishop for the knight because then the b pawn just yeah exactly yeah, yeah right. he has to keep right. his bishop so uh instead he played uh he played bishop f4 but now I just take here and I think for now I'm just completely winning because if takes pawn takes I can just do this, and this is clearly winning for me. Yep. So, uh, bishop, after f takes e4, you play bishop here, bishop b1. And now, this might be playable with the idea that here I have b1 queen. And so now, if rook takes, 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 I can take the bishop at the end of it. But after knight takes d5, I think he can just play bishop takes d6. And I think this is fine for him. So I decided to that uh, this pawn was worth more than this pawn. And I can just try to go with d4 and take this pawn. 
and so I just defend it with negative five. And also I have the idea of E3, E2. So now I have two connected pass bonds, basically. Right. And I think now, I'm, I, I don't think there's any way to stop it. You yeah. play king here with E3. Mm -hmm. And he can never take my knight because I will always queen with this pawn. So here, and now it's just easy tactic to win the game. Takes, takes, E2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's no way to stop it. I'm just going to be up the piece. Yeah, piece. Yep. So, yeah. He put a lot of pressure on me during the game, but mm -hmm. overall, I I think that Benoni structure is fine for black. So I think I, I held strong in that. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Does that does that put you at um, three out of four mm -hmm. uh, in the tournament? So, yeah, so a, a pretty good uh, result out, out of four games so far. So uh, good luck in the remaining rounds, and I uh, hope to do another interview with you. Uh, Thank you. Pretty soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.